So if you've been following this channel, you know that I've been using Negative Lab Pro for the past couple of months to convert and correct my film scans, and I've been really, really happy with the results. But before that, I was using ViewScan for the entire process, and that did work good as well. But I still wanted to kind of make a video just where we can look at both processes. We're gonna scan a bunch of film and just compare the results uh, in hopes that this helps anyone who is maybe interested in either program. Now I am still using ViewScan as part of my workflow just to basically scan the film and export an uncorrected raw file out of the program. So if you want to use Negative Lab Pro, you are going to need something like ViewScan to do that or you're going to have to have a digital SLR set up so you can take a picture of the negative itself. Okay, so for this test, we're gonna scan four different film stocks just to see how the programs deal with uh, some variation. So we have some Cinestill 50D, 35, the one and only roll I ever shot of this, uh, some Fuji 400H, Ektar 100, and of course, some Portra 400. So we're gonna jump over to the computer and we will start with the Portra. Okay, so we're gonna jump into things. I'm gonna scan each negative and export as a raw file, and I'm not gonna show you that part because it's just gonna be pretty boring, but then as I'm scanning the same negative and correcting in view scan, I'll show you that part, the color correction in this program, just so you can see the results uh, that I'm getting before we export it, and then we'll compare both in Lightroom afterwards. And the point of this really isn't to edit these files too much. I know that you could take either one and really get them to match or edit them for hours and make them look a certain way. I more so just want to show you the results that you can get from each program as sort of, as sort of a, a starting point. So for me, when I use ViewScan, I just try and get kind of the cleanest base image out of here and then same with Negative Lab Pro and then I would edit. So we're gonna look kind of at what each program and piece of software is giving us to start with. So jump in, gonna scan our first Portra and then we will look at how ViewScan deals with the color. Okay, so we'll crop this. So I've exported a raw file. This is ViewScan and its color conversion. And this is just set to auto levels. This is usually the setting that I use. And I often don't change too, too much. I have the white point kind of all the way down because I want to try and save as much information as I can. I don't want to clipping anything, but it's actually done a pretty decent job. The image itself looks really neutral and there's no weird color cast or anything. So I'm actually quite happy with this as a base. When it comes to view scan, there's really nothing I would change. All I would dig into if this had a color cast would be trying to balance it by clicking on a gray point somewhere in the image or maybe playing with some of these sliders a little bit. Um, but I'm pretty happy with that one. So I'm gonna export this. Okay, so this is Fuji 400H. And what's interesting is I actually don't think I've ever scanned any 400H at home. This image, I did have scanned by the lab when I first shot this film, uh, but in, it'd be interesting to see how ViewScan deals with it and then also Negative Lab Pro. But again, this actually doesn't look too bad as a neutral starting point. Obviously it's really flat. It's gonna take some work in Lightroom if you wanted to get this to kind of a finished image. But uh, again, ViewScan seems to have done a pretty decent job just giving me a, a neutral starting point. I don't think there's anything I would change. I could balance off of this uh, pavement here, but I think I'm just gonna leave it. It looks pretty good. So we will scan this one. Okay, so this is Cinestill 50D. And again, I have actually never scanned Cinestill at home with ViewScan or converted it with Negative Lab Pro or anything like that. I actually only ever shot one roll of 50D and 35 mil. It was kind of like, had mixed feelings on how much I like it. Uh, so anyways, this is ViewScan's auto levels once again. And it seems a little warm, but to be honest, all of the scans that I had done from the lab all kind of had this look to them. So I think I'm gonna leave it just because the whites here do look fairly white. A uh, little bit of warmth here in the pavement. Maybe I'll try and correct that after, but I'm not gonna try and balance this or do anything because it's actually not that bad as is. So uh, yeah, we will just scan this one. So here's Ektar in view scan. This is auto levels again. It looks okay, 
There's definitely a cast. If you've watched some of my previous scanning videos uh, with Ektar, you would have seen me talking about how I find that Ektar is really blue and also has a lot of red in it as well. And I'm seeing that here for sure. So we can try and balance maybe off of this pavement. Always a little hesitant because sometimes it will go really warm and then you have to kind of hunt around. In view scan, if you basically right click anywhere in the image on a neutral patch, so say something like some pavement, uh, view scan will try and do a bit of a balance. But in this scenario, that's not bad. It kind of brings us back to the start a little bit, but that to me looks like the most neutral area in this image. So still seeing a lot of kind of blue and red uh, in the kind of shadow areas, but I think I'm gonna leave it. It's not too, too bad. And I know that is a characteristic of Ektar. So I'm gonna scan this image like this, and then we'll also see how Negative Lab Pro kind of deals with uh, the Ektar negative itself. So let's go ahead and scan this. So we got all our images in here. Finally, they're all sorted. I went ahead and just cropped the raw files that haven't been converted and set their profiles to the Negative Lab Pro V2.1 profile and then auto white balance them. So basically we're all good to go. I'm gonna do these by pairs and then we're gonna compare just so we can see how they look. So the first one is the Porch 400. Here is the file that we brought in from ViewScan that was corrected in ViewScan. Doesn't look too bad. Obviously would need a bunch of work, but it's a pretty neutral base. Uh, I would add definitely some saturation, a little bit of contrast and tonal tweaks, stuff like that. But let's go ahead first and we will just, let's see what Negative Lab Pro will give us on the unconverted raw file. And again, we will tweak just a little bit, but we aren't gonna do too much in the program. So this is just as is Negative Lab Pro converting it. The tones are set to all soft, which is what I always go with. And then I have sharpening set to lab. Obviously sharpening doesn't really matter for this one. Uh, in theory, both images should be equally as sharp just because they're coming from the exact same scanner. So this isn't bad. Uh, obviously it has a little more saturation than the view scan image. But why don't we go ahead and we will just edit this view scan one quick so we can kind of get it looking a little bit better. Not gonna spend too much time on this, like I said, but at least this way we can kind of compare it to the Negative Lab Pro version. So we'll say something like that, a little bit better. Again, you could really tweak either of these images quite a bit. And then let's see if we need to tweak this one. So we'll leave the Negative Lab Pro as is. And that's what I've noticed using um, NLP so far is that the results it gives me kind of right out of the software are always really, really nice usually. And I don't have to tweak too, too much. I still would edit this one a bit. But if we go ahead and compare, so we have Negative Lab Pro on the left and we have ViewScan on the right. And they're actually both not bad. It is really interesting though to see the color difference. So obviously this car here on the Negative Lab Pro version is quite kind of blue where on the ViewScan version, it's actually kind of leaning towards the uh, mint or, or green end a little bit. And I don't actually know which one I prefer. I prefer the reds better and the overall tones on the Negative Lab Pro version, but the ViewScan isn't bad. But again, we aren't gonna get into editing these. You could a whole bunch, but it is really fascinating to see the differences in either one. Uh, the color doesn't seem as, I don't know what the term I would use, maybe smooth. It looks like there's a little bit of kind of warmth or, or almost like a brown or orange cast in some of the color on this car. Unfortunately, it's been so long since I shot this image that I don't know uh, the true color of this car, but I have a feeling it's leaning more towards what we're seeing on the view scan side of things. Um, what we will do though, is I made just a copy. Let's see, yeah, a TIFF copy. So maybe since we edited the view scan one, we'll do the same here. Uh, with this Negative Lab Pro one quickly just to see what the uh, tones and kind of colors will look like if this is brightened up a little bit, Simil just similar to what we did with the other one. So let's say something like that. So edited view scan on the left, edited Negative Lab Pro on the right. And I feel like personally to me, I am liking the Negative Lab Pro version better, uh, but I feel like the ViewScan one 
is probably more true when it comes to the color of the car. But again, it's been a long time since I've been there. So, but to my eye, I really prefer this version. It looks nice, but they both did actually a pretty decent job. So really interesting to see. Okay, jump into the next one. So this is the 400H, really flat, definitely needs some work. So let's go ahead and we'll just kind of edit this one a little bit really quick again. Not gonna spend too much time on this. Okay, we'll say something like that, just to give us a little bit better of an idea. So we will convert this one now. Okay, so I'm gonna switch this to all soft and this exposure needs to be brought up quite a bit. This is interesting. This is quite a bit different looking than the view scan. I feel like it needs to be warmed up quite a bit. That definitely helps a little bit. Okay, make a copy as well. Okay, interesting. So Negative Lab Pro on the left here, view scan on the right. And the color difference, again, is really, really fascinating to see. So especially up here, the sign is really kind of green and then Negative Lab Pro has pushed this quite blue. Again, this one was shot quite a while ago, so it's hard for me to know which one is true, but let's go back out and we will grab this TIFF copy from Negative Lab Pro so we can edit it. So for me, I would probably warm this one up quite a bit and also push some magenta in, something like that. Super quick. So there are the two now. So view scan on the left, negative lab pro on the right. Interesting. Very, very interesting the difference. Again, for me, I prefer this negative lab pro version on the right. I would definitely edit this a bunch still. I would edit both of them actually quite a bit. The view scan image is just a little too magenta and the colors themselves, I'm a little, Enjoying more in this version, although it would need some work. There's a ton of red in these bricks. Um, and it doesn't look very true, but I am enjoying them. So, yeah, interesting though to see the difference. Quite, quite a drastic difference between the two of these. Okay, next up, this is the view scan version of the Cinestill. And this negative is crazy, crazy dirty. <laughs> Uh, I'm not going to do too much to this. Maybe we'll just try and correct it a little bit, warm it up. Actually, not a huge fan of how this looks overall. But let's go ahead and convert. I'll be very curious. I've never converted any Cinestill using Negative Lab Pro. Wow. Interesting. Very, very different. Huh. I actually like it quite a bit more uh, already than the ViewScan version. Interesting, hmm. You know what's fascinating with this one, make a copy as well, is the view scan version to my eyes reminds me of the lab scans that I got back. I remember them being kind of really, really warm and not enjoying the color that much. And this view scan version actually looks, uh, to me, looks really, really nice. Not as kind of green. And let's go and We will grab this second version again. So I would still do some editing to this one. I'd probably brighten it up quite a bit. Warm it up just a little. But it actually, that is interesting because I have never been the biggest fan of Cinestill 50D, just the colors I've got back, but I'm quite enjoying that one compared to, this was the ViewScan version which you could definitely dig into and edit quite a bit, but in terms of uh, kind of a base image, for me, the Negative Lab Pro version is way, way, way nicer. Uh, drastic difference between the two. So far, the closest has kind of been the Portra 400, although the, the greens and the blues were different. 
but the Fuji was quite different, and the Cinestill is really, really different, considering just minimal editing on both, looking at both from kind of like a base standpoint. Fascinating. One thing we will do really quick is I'm going to go dig up, see if I can dig up the uh, lab scan from this from way back. Yeah, so here it is. So let's bring this one in just for fun. So that's a lab scan. It's a lab scan on the right and view scan on the left and then Negative Lab Pro. And to me, the Negative Lab Pro is by far the nicest. It's actually really, really interesting to see the difference between them. I don't know if there's any edits to this. So this lab scan does have a few edits. I would probably change it a little bit now. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to try scanning some of this Cinestill uh, using this method, because I really like how that looks. Okay, fascinating. Last set, we're gonna do the Ektar. So here is the version that we pulled out of ViewScan. I'm going to warm this up for sure. If I were to be processing just this ViewScan file, I would definitely dig into the curves a little bit and try and pull some of that blue um, out of the shadows. But we will just give this a little kind of kick and saturation because I don't want to alter these too much. We're trying to find out just what gives you a better base to work with. Okay. This is NLP. Okay, interesting. Changes again to all soft. And we will leave it as is. We won't do too much, but yeah, definitely nicer in my opinion. Still some uh, blue in the shadows, but actually not that bad at all. They're, they're way more neutral than the uh, version out of ViewScan. So we got ViewScan on the left, Negative Lab Pro on the right. For me, this Negative Lab Pro version is a lot nicer. It's interesting. So in the Portra, and also in the 400H, and then also in the Ektar, I am noticing the view scan images are kind of trending towards magenta a little bit. You can see that kind of up in the sky here. Whereas the blues for me are a lot nicer in the NLP versions. So yeah, really interesting to see the difference between all of these. And as we saw in basically every single film stock, the way that both programs are interpreting the colors is quite different. For me, I prefer Negative Lab Pro over ViewScan. It's all gonna come down to personal preference, but I feel like other than this Fuji file, I'm not 100% sold on this, but I still prefer it more than the ViewScan version. But all of the rest of them, I'm really happy with kind of the colors and the tones that uh, it's given me right at a conversion. I would say that this definitely still makes me enjoy Negative Lab Pro, and that's what I'm gonna continue using in the future. But it was really interesting just to do this test, get all these different film stocks, do it really simple, see what we get as a base conversion. And uh, I hope that this answers a couple questions for anyone who was curious about the differences between these softwares. And hopefully it kind of leads you in the right direction to pick the one that you think is gonna work right for you. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching. If you aren't following me on Instagram, my link's down below. It's where I post all of my work. So hop on over there, check it out, and we will talk to you soon. Bye.